Hey everybody, welcome back to the home stretch of Wrath of Cortex. We have nine gems and five relics to grab before we are officially done with this game. And this is the first of what is going to be two box gem videos. You may remember we have... There were nine box gems in the regular 25 levels that we ended up missing out on. Either due to my own my own personal derpiness or a lack of a lack of the appropriate a lack of the appropriate powers or just straight up not knowing where they were. I actually don't remember which of the three applied to this level, but we'll find out. Crashes there, neatly, neatly mirroring my own feelings. I hate backtracking in games, just to get that out there. It's one of the things that really bugs me. Really, it really bugs me about the Crash games, though less so because in the Crash games you're not required to go backtrack. This is not, this is not required content. It's just if you want to see the real ending you have to go through and do all this, and the game explicitly tells you as such if you beat Cortex without having everything. He tells you, haha, you beat me, but you haven't got everything, so fuck you, you get no actual closure to this story. Every, every Crash game since, actually I think well, even since, every single Crash game has done this, even even Crash Team Racing. I think the only exception might be Crash Bash, but really, who cares about that game? So Crash 1 did it because it had the box gems, and then Crash 2 did it as well, and Crash 3 did it, and now Crash Team Racing did it, and now Wrath of Cortex did it. It really is... An incredibly obnox obnoxious thing, at least from my point of view, to have that ending be you haven't you haven't got everything. You are not the obsessive compulsive completionist that you should be. How dare you now go back and get everything if you want any actual closure in this game. Okay, I'm done with my rant now. So yeah, I don't actually know where the boxes I missed going through first time, and there you can see the proof that this was in fact the first run. It might have been that extra life box up there, which is now easily grabbable with a double jump. But 129 out of 129, and that's the gem collected. And we are going quick fire on these. I'm not, I'm not giving, I'm not taking the time to stop off in, stop off back in the warp room and drop off the gem. We are straight into compactor reactor. Now you remember going through the first, going through this the first time. I did actually point out in that very first actual gameplay video where the box I missed was. It was somewhere along these minecart tracks. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but there was a box just off to the side like that, which I missed going through. Which made the inevitable failure to get the box gem all the more painful, just because I thought I had everything. So minecart dealt with back into the actual level. I did actually get hit by one of those guys. I can't remember. I think it was. I think it was the relic. One of the relic videos going through um, Cortex Vortex. I can't remember if I mentioned it in the video or not, but it does bear saying. I did actually get hit by one of them, and I think the trigger is actually getting hit by the vials. Yeah, the. the pseudo explosion that comes from them isn't actually important, but if you actually get hit by the vial itself, it does deal damage. 
So I was being a little more cautious as I'm going through this level, knowing they could actually do damage. It's made it a lot easier by having the sprint. It's one of those things you don't really think you'll miss until you're actually doing the relic levels constantly and you realise you haven't seen one for a while. Is the bonus platforms. Like, because there were none... There were none in the... There were none in the secret warp room, which kind of bummed me out of it, because nighttime, nighttime probably could have been improved by having one of those. I think <coughs> the bonus level that was in in darkness in Crash 3 actually worked pretty well. At least it didn't annoy or anger me, so it's kind of a missed opportunity there. And I completely forgot what that exclamation mark box filled in. This goes to show you how long it's been since we were last back here. At least on that bonus level. Now, after many life losses throughout later parts of this game, we're now back in. We're now back up to 99 lives. There you can see, actually getting hit by the vial. It is possible. One of the things about the box gem, just in terms of the actual mechanic, I don't remember if it was ever this explicit in in the earlier Crash games, whether it's a Traveler's Tales thing. Is that it does seem it does seem like it slows your get your play down a lot. It might just be because there are so many more boxes, especially it's more noticeable in these earlier levels. Like the most amount of boxes in any level in Crash 3 was 120 on the final level, appropriately. And the very first level in this game has that many. So it's something it's something that really slows it's something that really slows your game down having to stop and look around because you're because when you've got so many more boxes and the levels are so much longer you're more you're more anxious and paranoid about missing that one box that's going to force you to go through the whole level again like the first level of first level of Crash 3 had 20 boxes just think about that for a second. I don't know if it's just overindulgence from Traveller's Tales, because God knows Traveller's Tales are not incapable of making... They're not incapable of making a good game. I think the whole LEGO series of games has proven that over the years. Sonic 3D, maybe not so much. And Toy Story 2 as well, which was a great game. Like, Traveller's... It is not beyond Traveller's Tales to make a good game. But... I don't know if it was just pressure at being handed a big license, or maybe even just a license that was kind of in need of... Well, not even need, in need of reinvention. I was just seeing if I could bounce off that mushroom. Sadly, I could not. It wasn't even a license that was in need of reinvention, because... Crash was still on a high. I mean, this only came. I think this only came a year or two after Crash Team Racing. I know some people think the inevitable karting game is a bad thing, but unless you're Mario. Well, I think. One of the things I haven't showed off enough really is uh, Crash's idle animations. Like just playing without Apple there. There's a sign of, of splash damage down to a science. 
it is a two box it is a two box radius this is what I managed to figure out going through all this sorry but there's just not much to say when it comes to all these levels we've done before especially when it comes to just blasting through these bonus stages. It's one of those rare occasions where you can actually clear a bonus stage of all those boxes. You don't have to wait for the, the nitro box at the end of the level. <coughs> More Apple fun times. And finally onto the Jeep. The Jeep's pretty re the Jeep's a pretty relaxing se sequence going for going for box gem stuff in this level anyway. Because as we've mentioned before, in chase sequences, whatever's chasing you will inevitably grab all the boxes. question of following the app apples to where the boxes actually are if we want a goodie inside them. And then taking it a bit slower through this tunnel because you don't have the rhinos to pick up your slack. It becomes even more egregious coming out of the tunnel when you will just blast past and miss that box. So I ended up killing myself and going back to get it. Yeah, you've got to be efficient when you're doing this stuff. boxes are rendered kind of pointless in this game compared to the way they were in Crash 3. So remember the big thing about question mark boxes is they can contain 1, 5 or 10 apples whereas regular plane crates would only ever contain 1. But in this game they're one and the same as demonstrated there. So anyway, H2O no, water level and everything that that implies. Actually not a hard level to get the box gem, considering levels are just bad because they're slow. Like there's, there's no getting away from this. In a water level, it is slow. Add to that the inertia stopping you from stopping. And after a while, when you're going for perfection, this level just isn't fun. At least not this initial section. It's about to it's about to improve. But that's another thing I don't like about box gems in this game. When you have when you have those road of no return sections. Especially early in the level. Like at least in Crash 3, the chase sequences would at least end the level. this game, if you're going through it the first time, you don't know you're not going to be able to get back to that session. You've never had that kind of transition before. Especially if you're not if you're coming from Crash 3 and you're used to water taking up the entire level. It's also a task of precision jumping perfectly at this level. Just all these electri electrified floors. 
No, mechanic I. It's a mechanic I don't like, which is weird because it's no different really from any other kind of and that happened. It's no different from any other kind of like dangerous floor type situation, like the floor is lava, etc. It just seems so much more irritating when you have an electrified floor that you would usually be able to walk through. I think it's just because it's it's a manufactured obstacle rather than an understandable environmental one. Which I think is the kind of category lava falls into. Still, at least spinning huge mounds of boxes is still fun. This is something I screwed up. And perfect pro timing on the uh, tornado spin there. And I'm missing three boxes. I just figure. I initially go back to look for them, then realize I can't get back across that chasm. And, and just figure, yeah, they're probably nitros. Which they were, as you can see there. So anyway, now it's just a case of getting back through, getting through what's left of the level. I assure you this is the boring half of the box gem collection videos. The next video has far more interesting levels. Those lasers are no threat whatsoever. Just because you can just walk straight under them, they are set above your head. I think one of those things is there to maybe look like a hazard, but it really isn't. Same applies to that second set. So that's another world completed, and we'll be on to the next lap next time.